Hello and welcome to Speaking Opera. My name is Howard Hart and I'll be your host today in a two-part interview with Lucia Pop done at the Mayflower Hotel in New York City in February of 1981. I hope you enjoy it. Records, which is, you know, Dvorak, Prokofiev, Kodai, and Janacek. What was, what was the inspiration in the beginning for recording it? What made you think? I tell you what, my two grandmothers, because um, my, I mean, I, you know, I'm sort of a product and child of middle Europe, and uh, I have four different grandparents. I mean, everybody does, <laughs> <laughs> obviously. But I mean, four different nationalities. My uh, grandmother from mother's side is Austrian, and my grandfather was from Moravia, and the from father side was uh, Romanian and Hungarian. Which means that we, sp I mean, I did. I don't spoke all. I don't speak all of these languages, but I speak quite a quite a bit. And. Uh, we know the stars. We know that the the folks, that the, the folk tone, the folklore tone, and they are so beautiful. I mean, they are all folk songs set up by good composers. I mean, if you listen, it's, I mean, it's amazing how much colors in in a circle of uh, 300 miles could be. I mean, it's something very strange for America. You get in the airplane in New York and you fly seven hours and you get up and you still can speak English. Nothing changed. Let's try to do it in Europe. You passed, I don't know how many cultures, but how many, how many uh, languages, and how many styles. Especially in, in America, all these people are here also. As I told you, I never feel really strange. If you sit in Germany or in Austria, you think that you are one individual against block of different speaking people and then you have an accent and you are strange. This can't happen in America because everybody is from somewhere and everybody has a kind of accent and therefore it's a sort of reserve home for everybody in the whole world and I find this spirit is so wonderful and it was also the reason why I chose the program for my first society in Chicago and I was not wrong because I'm not a sexist. The reviews were so incredible from both reviews that I read. And I'm curious, do you think that people feel, just listening to the songs, the emotion behind them without knowing the words? It's sort of what you were just talking I'm about. I'm sure that they know, because uh, they are so different. I mean, they, the basic, the emotions are very, very simple. I mean, they are, the songs are not very sophisticated. What, what, is, what, what, is, what, is the, what is described in these songs is, laugh and hate and and uh, farewell and uh, and and joy or sunshine i mean very basic feelings they are very very close to everybody and uh, therefore you don't really need to understand the words mm -hmm. how is it to sing pamina after all the years of your fame as the queen of the night you know i'm singing pamina now uh, since uh, i would say eight uh, Six, six to eight years, and I think it's. Um, I get younger, you know. First I was my mother, now I'm my uh, the, the daughter. <laughs> uh, I think it's Pamina is much more rewarding because she's human. I mean, she's uh, just a young girl, and she has her doubts and uh, her jealousy and uh, her desperation and love, and that's a lot of to do. I mean, we, you can use your voice to 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 somehow. Uh, describe this feeling in Queen of the Night you know, just absolutely sort of fasten your seatbelts and go <laughs> just uh, lots of technique I mean it's wonderful if Queen of the Night has even the voice to express some, some sadness about her daughter's disappearing or so. but you know I think no Queen of the Night think too much about that because she's too busy with the coloratura and therefore I find it much nicer and much more relaxing to sing Pamina. Always, oh God, I'm happy. The second act when I don't have to start is the Rache, and I can just listen. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, in this amazing production, and I, I love to be back in New York in this special Chagall production, because it was me, who was at the first queen of the night, in the opening, opening night, and in the opening season of the new Met, and it was my very first appearing in America. And, uh, 
yes, I can remember. It was quite, quite, uh, quite good success. I remember one quotation from uh, New York Times review was "Pop on the Top," which I loved very much. I really showed everybody in the whole world. But then I gave up with the, the Queen of the Night after after a few years. You know, the voice the voice became heavier and. Uh, when I had to think about singing and I can't enjoy it just that I, I give up the part because I have for my only and very good vocal teacher, voice teacher. She said, singing is basically an expression of joy. And if you start to fear something, you give up the part. Who was your teacher? She was a lady in, in Bratislava in the hometown. She's Austrian. Her name is Prosenz Ruszowska, which is very difficult to remember. But I think I was very fortunate. You know, the teaching or, I mean, to learning to sing is a very much a question of a lot of trust. It's like to go to a big, heavy surgery. You know, you have to trust. You have to do everything what the teacher is telling you. And if you have bad luck and you don't find really the, the one which is good for your voice, could be for somebody else, could be good, that you are in trouble. I saw so many good voices ruined by bad teaching. I'm curious, could I ask you, of all of the characters you've sung, is there one that you really feel close to as a person and as a woman that you can relate to? Well, I felt very close to Sophie, but you know, one grows up. About, uh, you you can feel yeah it's one one I love very much is Susanna in marriage figure I think it's this is a part you know there's everything there and she's she should be of course young because she's just getting married but she's somehow ageless uh, she has everything everything in but uh, I like to sing the part and I love them all. In the moment I'm singing, then you know, then then you get you get give them up, and I liked Constanze also very much, but then I gave it up, and I'm sure there are so many nice parts that are still uh, waiting for me. I don't know how far one goes. I'm is singing a lot of. Uh, excuse me. Is one of them the Marshall in my chair? Oh, well, when I'm very depressed and feeling somehow. Said that I think I would love to sing Marshall. And then I had a day, you know, when she looks out of the window and the sun is shining, I said, oh, no, not yet, a little bit later. That's <laughs> 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 uh, good for jogging. And I think. <clears throat> I hope you enjoyed my conversation with Lucia Pop today. Please return for part two. For more information, visit our website at speakingopera.com.